Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news coming out uh, just moments ago here. Uh, it says, India Army goes all out war on Pakistan, kills over 20 Pakistani soldiers in Quran. That's what's being reported on a news website called Postcard. I was a little bit reluctant at first, uh, and then I found this particular tweet right here. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is an actual um, uh, a, a man from India here. Uh, Rajev Sharama, he says, it's a warlike situation on Indian-Pakistan borderline of controls has become a line of no control. That was only five minutes ago that he posted this, and I'm going to news just within like a minute or so after I actually was able to get this confirmation on this right here. According to the article on the postcard here, uh, they're stating that the Indian Army has retaliated aggressively, destroying four Pakistani posts at Quran after the Pakistan indulged in an unprovoked ceasefire violations yesterday, resulting in the death of one Indian BS, BSF uh, Yawan. The Home Ministry is said to have given free hand to the Army and told them to give uh, a befitting reply to the Pakistanians. The, the Army launched a massive fire assault at Pakistani post in Quran uh, area, according to the reports, heavily casualties have been reported on the Pakistani side. Initial reports that have been as many as 50 casualties. Uh, according, to the, uh, according to the Pakistanis, there were 20 uh, soldiers that were killed, but what the Indians are saying that it's actually 50 that have been killed in this latest conflict that has just got sparked up there. It's already tensions enough going all over Europe. Uh, for example, Germany is to send tanks to the Russian border. Uh, that's something that's going to be very provocative for Russia. Uh, and as you know, we had on Ivan uh, Pranar, uh, on our broadcast yesterday, the Croatian uh, parliament member there that was stating that NATO is acting just like that of Hitler's Germany. Even in our broadcast, he spoke about that it's that there's no control, there's no, uh, you know, there's no democracy in the Euro in Europe at all. It seems to be more led by a controlled by a group of elites, uh, the one percent, as he called it. Very interesting as we're seeing these. And not only that, we also have the foreign ministry sp uh, spokesperson, Maria Zakharova, that just brought out this statement here on the Russia's official uh, website of the Russian Federation here in regards to the 300, uh, and 300 plus Marines, 330 U.S. Marines that are being stationed in Norway. Uh, and she goes on to state, because the question is asked her, what does, what does Russia consider with this situation here with these Marines being stationed in Norway? Well, as she states in here, they're going to be given the freedom to move about anywhere inside of Norway while they are there. And uh, make it a little bit bigger here on the screen for you guys so you can see this article for yourself. Uh, but Ms. Zakharova um, uh, states in there that uh, they, they have that freedom to move about anywhere in the country of Norway. And even though it is a rotation force, a rotation force, clearly that's Russian, no, it is a permanent force. Uh, they also mentioned that it doesn't seem like very many as far as the number, but nonetheless that they're allowed to go anywhere inside of the country of Norway. Uh, and that would also mean near Russia's border on the northern end. So Russia is very concerned about this. Uh, we have on top of it a fresh wave of militant shellings that kills three and injures a 40 in a government held West Aleppo, according to the doctors that are saying this to RT uh, International. And uh, uh, I, I, just after a huge wave of children that were attacked and killed by rebel groups there, U.S.-backed rebel groups inside of Syria. Reminds me when the, uh, the news uh, broadcast, the Swiss news station that that uh, interviewed President Bashar al-Assad recently made the, the, uh, the, the comment to President Bashar al-Assad saying, you have the power, sir, to stop this. Well, we think that President Barack Obama has the power to stop the conflict in Syria as well. All he has to do is stop funding all the terrorists that he has there. And especially at this particular time, I think that would be a great thing to do because Bashar al-Assad is given three months uh, uh, of an open door to those Syrian uh, citizens that want to lay down their arms and come back into the community without facing prosecution. So that's pretty serious there to, be, to open that door for them. Uh, so yes, it now lays in the hand of President Barack uh, Barack Hussein Obama to make the decision to quit arming the terrorists who are nothing but a bunch of thugs that go around killing children and maiming civilians. Um, 
very serious situation indeed. Also, an interesting article that came out on Sputnik today, West can't afford to stumble into a military conflict between U.S., Russia, and China. U.S. leadership to reconsider its relationships with geopolitical competitors, China and Russia, putting a greater power relations before a hegemonic ambitions. Whether one likes it or not, the U.S. unipolar era has come to an end, opening a door to a world of a great power balance, the former British intelligence chief noted. Now, that's what he's noting, but the posturing by NATO forces and the U.S. basically forcing the hands of, a, of the very select few that seem to be in power, as we see from uh, the, the uh, MP member, uh, Mr. Uh, Ivan Pranar, letting us know that they don't even have a say. The prime minister, as he said, comes back to Croatia, and clearly uh, he asked the question, wh why do we all of a sudden do, uh, vote for our people in Croatia to go to war on Russia's border? But he got no answer whatsoever. So it's not the governments of these European Union nations, whether it be Croatia, whether it be uh, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Fran France, Germany, etc. The people don't want to see their children on the borders and fighting in a war that the U.S. Uh, President Barack Obama seems to be instigating. But nonetheless, they are moving uh, all these troops there, so it lets you know it is clearly for a globalist agenda, a new world order, a hegemony that is going to be ran by someone at the top that, they're, that they have plans for. Uh, so if you've ever thought about an antichrist system, they are fighting to bring one about. And it seems like some nations just don't want any part of that. Can't say as I blame them. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Just a quick take of our broadcast this evening. Shalom.